The start of a year is always full of predictions, particularly around the property market. Analysts and the media love to make predictions about what is going to happen over the next 12 months. And this is where the scaremongering usually comes in, the bad headlines, the fear producing analysis. But what I would say is that normally all of that is wrong and all of the analysis and the predictions are actually so wide of the mark. So really, it's best to ignore them. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what you should do in 2024, whether you should invest in property or whether you should just sit on your hands and wait. So to start with, let's recap on where we are. Let's see what happened in 2023, just to remind ourselves. So we've got interest rates at 5.2%. We obviously 14 months worth of continuous uplift in interest rates where we only saw the last kind of couple of months of 2023 not have an increase increase in interest rate. And in terms of the property market, well, depending on which set of data you look at, we've got a 1.7 increase based on Halifax's data, or we've got a 1.8 decrease according to Nationwide. Now, of course, that's on average house price, but overall, they are fairly minor changes, really. Nothing to kind of worry about or really write home about. They're sort of insignificant kind of change really. But as I said, that's on average house price. But we know there's actually some significant regional variations that are important to look at and consider. So for example, London has seen a drop in average house prices of 2.3%. The southeast has fallen by 4.3%. And contrast that to Scotland, which has seen a growth of 2.6%. So where we are now is that the market has in some ways corrected itself. There's been some small kind of downturn but it's nothing significant as a as i mentioned it's nothing to kind of get too uptight about but that's quite a contrast to the predictions that many analysts are forecasting for what would happen in 2023 so let's remind ourselves what they said so lloyds and halifax said that house prices would fall by eight percent in 2023 and savills went even further than that and actually said there would be a 10 percent drop in house prices so even the the worst kind of reality, which was the nationwide figures at a drop of 1.8, are even more insignificant compared to what those analysts were forecasting at the beginning of 2023. So if we look at some of the forecasts that those same analysts have put forward for 2024, they've gone a lot more kind of conservative this year and are maybe a little bit more pragmatic. Halifax have said there's going to be fall in house prices of between 2 and 4%, similar to what just happened in the last 12 months if you look at Nationwide's data. And Savills have said a 3% fall. So again, kind of fairly modest numbers, really, like nothing outlandish like they were predicting last year. As we know, the rental market completely boomed in 2023 and rents actually increased on average across the country by a staggering 8.1% in 2023. This is set to continue with Savills predicting a 6% increase in 2024 and actually an 18 percent increase in rents over the next five years according to them and in terms of interest rate many are predicting that given inflation is coming down near the bank of england's target of two percent that interest rates will be cut in the middle of the year which will make the mortgage market even more competitive than it is at the moment because it is actually very competitive and there is a lot of lenders on a week by week basis cutting their rates so it's going to get even more competitive from here likely in the middle of the year current buy to let rates as things stand are on average 5.24 percent on a five-year fix but there is some rates available for under five percent but some of those do come with high fees so do make sure you'll check those out so there's a mixed picture here as to where we're at what happened last year and what is kind of predicted this year we've got a kind of flat lining kind of slightly correcting, softening market, but only kind of very negligible kind of numbers. Because remember, those numbers are based on the years before. And obviously, after
after COVID, we saw a boom. So essentially the market is kind of correcting itself to potentially prices that we saw before COVID. But then on the other hand, on the flip side, we've actually got ideal market for investors. We've got quite favorable circumstances because we have got a massively booming rental market, which is set to continue. So rents are continually going up and the demand is going through the roof. We've got mortgage rates, which are starting to come down and a mortgage market, which is heating up and becoming more competitive. So therefore rates will be reducing continuously throughout 2024. And we've also prices correcting themselves and coming down a little bit, which means that there is more opportunity to potentially get more favorable deals and, and purchase prices negotiated. So all of that means better returns and better profits for investors. So those point to fairly favorable kind of conditions for investing in 2024. However, everything that we just talked about is through a very short term lens. We've looked back at what's happened in 2023 for a 12 month lens. We've looked forward into 2024 with a 12 month lens. Property isn't something to be looked at with a 12 month point of view. It is something to be looked at with 20 to 30 year point of view. So looking at it from a 12 month viewpoint is actually the wrong horizon because what happens over a year period is actually a drop in the ocean compared to looking at what will happen over the next 20 to 30 years. Because looking at it from a 20 to 30 year horizon, if we kind of think back 30 years from today and look at 1994 and think about everything that's happened in the world, in the economy since then, we know that there's been multiple interest rate changes. We know there's been a couple of bad recessions and market collapses, but we know there's also been market recoveries and booms and good times to invest, slightly worse times to invest and then really great times to invest. And what we do know is that through that time horizon, 30 year period since 1994, we do know through the magic and the power of capital growth, prices have increased. So if we look at the data, if we look at the average house price in 1994 was 52,114. And now we compare that to now to the end of 2023, the average house price is now 258,000. So despite all of the recessions and market fluctuations and interest rate changes over that time horizon from today compared to 1994, property prices have increased by nearly 200,000 pounds. And what this shows is that it's the importance of a long term view and the importance of capital appreciation that really make the difference and really bring the wealth, not looking at the short term time horizons. Because if you'd thought about the next 12 months sitting there in 1994, and then potentially not invested, you could have missed out on 200,000 pounds of growth and equity because you looked at it with the wrong time horizon. And it is the same thought process now looking at it from a 12 month window and looking at what's going to happen over the next 12 months is the wrong viewpoint. You want to be looking at it from a far greater time horizon and view and looking at it for the next 20, 30 years. And a crucial point here is that the longer you invest for, the more time your investment has time to recover and not be affected so much by the short term fluctuations and market changes. Because if for example, you invested in just before 2008, and then obviously went through that crash, and then decided to kind of exit the market in like 2010, or 2011, you haven't given the time the market enough time to recover, the market actually recovered around sort of 2014. And it's just about having that kind of patience that you know that the market will recover eventually, and obviously since 2008 to date, the market has increased significantly and has recovered since. So if you had kind of made a sort of rash decision and, and pulled out right at the beginning with a short term focus, you would have missed out then on the next sort of 15 years of recovery and then growth. Having a long term viewpoint in property is fundamental because we know the market goes up and down. We know interest rates go up and down. We know governments come and go, legislation 
position changes and all of those have an effect. However, despite all of that, we know that the market continues over time to go up. And in fact, historically, it has done this. The long term trend since 1845 is upwards. And in fact, the data shows that the average increase on a yearly basis is 3.8% since 1845, which demonstrates that on average, year on year, there is growth in the market. And despite all of the short term kind of changes and fluctuations, the upward curve is always growth. And the longer you stay in the market, the more gains you will get. But I'm sure there's some of you out there watching this video thinking, well, actually, I could wait till interest rates come down in June, or maybe I'll even wait till see what interest rates are like in 2025, where the market is then maybe it's gone down even further than the sort of 4% worst case scenario that Halifax are predicting, I might just wait it out and wait for potentially those better kind of conditions to invest. And I speak to a lot of clients and mentees that have that viewpoint. But the question I always ask is, well, what is the kind of cost of waiting? And what are the risks of not investing? And there are a multitude of them to, to consider. I think one of the biggest ones, and I see this all the time with clients that I speak to that decide not to invest, is that life gets in the way and distractions come up and circumstances change. For example, I had one client who was really keen to invest and then actually six months later, he didn't invest and then six months later, he said that he wasn't now in a position to invest because they decided to spend the money on an extension and a new kitchen, for example. So that is just an example of where a different decision and a different path has been made because they didn't pull the trigger at the beginning. And I know which decision is is going to provide them with a better long-term future. And it definitely kind of wasn't the extension. So there is of things coming up and circumstances changing that you don't always potentially know about. And that's why it's best to get in as early as possible. Another huge one and not investing is you're missing out on compounding and capital growth and You'll see from this compounding chart that I'm putting on the screen now that the longer you are in the market, the more chance and the longer time period you have for compounding. And you'll see the contrasting results achieved from these two investors that you can see in the graph. One's invested a lot earlier than the other, and you can see the difference in the results. And that is all of the power of compounding. Another risk here is that you're losing out on returns. Now, could be getting a maybe a four or five percent return in the bank at the moment but given the sort of inflation is still uh, sort of around three or three and a half percent your money is still being eroded by two percent and you are losing out on getting better returns from investing and that's just from the immediate kind of cash flow of the return and not including the capital appreciation or capital growth that you'd also be missing out on and i think there is a also a sort of general and there can be with some investors that i speak to to a general kind of misconception that you need to find the perfect time to invest and that they are sort of scared to invest not at the perfect time. And therefore, what happens is they never actually invest at all because that perfect time never arrived. And that is the worst thing of all because not investing at all because you're waiting for that perfect moment means that you won't hit your goals. There's one thing to emphasize here is that if you don't do anything, if you don't act at all, all and maybe take a, a, a risk and a plunge and not hitting your goals is a much worse position to be in than trying to find the perfect time to invest and trying to make those kind of small gains by waiting for a 2% drop in interest rates, for example. So let's look at an example, opportunity cost and the risks of not investing through listening to predictions. One of the most significant events of the last 10 years in the UK was Brexit. Many analysts lists and including government ministers and the chancellor were actually predicting potential crashes and changes in the market of 20 to 30 percent. So obviously that led to a lot of fear in the market and that would have led to a lot of people not investing. Let's look at that. So in 2016, looking at a property in the north, purchasing a property in 2016 worth 100,000. 
you could have got rent of 650 pounds. And this translates into, after cost, a 250 pounds net cash flow per month. And that is 5% yield. So bringing this kind of up to date and looking at that investment deal, this property would now be worth, the property value would be 131,000 pounds. So that's an uplift of 31,000 pounds profit um, and equity and then the cash flow in that period the income is £21,000. So if you hadn't invested in 2016 because you listened to those predictions you would have missed out on £52,000 profit in only an eight-year period and that is the risks of not investing and listening to predictions. So I think rather than trying to concentrate and do as much research into where the market cycle is now and what is potentially going to happen over the next 12, 24 months, you want to be focusing on getting the right deals, building your network, getting the right knowledge and actually making a move and a step towards investing and coming at it from a viewpoint of I'm looking at at this as a 20 to 30 year investment and looking at it from that period and knowing that there will be ups and downs and there will be market fluctuations and not having to worry about the short term because all you're doing when you're trying to work out whether it's the right time to invest or whether you're trying to beat the market by trying to predict where it's going to go is you're essentially going to lose and Warren Buffett says that he says don't try and predict the market don't try and beat the market because you won't succeed in being able to do it and that's also why he says and it's his most famous kind of quote in these kind of circumstances it's not timing the market it's time in the market and that's all to do with compounding and the more time you spend in the market the bigger your gains and the bigger the compounding you will get so overall it's best to ignore all of the predictions all of the analysis the interest rate fluctuations the scaremongering the negative narratives in the media the social media noise and look at property through the correct lens look at it through a 30 year time horizon think back to the example i gave where if you had invested in 1994 you would have made on average a 200 pounds gain in your property value despite all of the ups and downs that we've seen over the last 30 years and looking at it through that lens and with that viewpoint means that you don't have to be right you don't have to try and beat the market you don't have to try and second guess yourself or the market and which way it's going to go and you can just be concentrated on that 30 year horizon and know with peace of mind that the market will recover despite whatever's happening in the short term with that long term horizon you will be able to grow your wealth and your financial security and meet your goals guys if you enjoyed this video today i'd really appreciate if you could like the video add any comments and questions that you may have i'd love to hear from you and the biggest thing you could do that would help us is to subscribe to this channel we're trying to grow it get more content out to people like you and knowing that there's people subscribing and liking the videos is the key metric for us to create more content so i'd really appreciate your support and thanks a lot